powered by the Montana Television Network. This is the 10 o'clock news on Q2, Montana's news leader. Good evening, everyone. Thanks for joining us this Thanksgiving. I'm Janelle Slade. Russ has the evening off. Well, if you're going to buy into Black Friday shopping this holiday weekend, the message tonight, the sooner the better. Tonight's semi clear and calm skies will not last long. Come tomorrow morning, frigid winds blow in, temperatures fall, and even if it's Black Friday inside, it will be all white and cold outside. Well, streets and highways across South Central and Eastern Montana set to turn downright dangerous over the next 48 hours. Parts of Montana already living in the midst of emergency travel only q Rob Griggs tracking the storm tonight and the punch it is going to deliver to our doorsteps, Rob. Yeah, well, Janelle, you nailed it. Uh, we got Thanksgiving out of the way, and guess what? The Christmas season is upon us, whether we like it or not, in terms of weather. Uh, the big event for us, of course, a winter storm warning for South Central Montana, our area, including Billings, uh, rolling between about 6 a.m. tomorrow through 6 p.m. Saturday. We could see 5 to 10 inches of snow with 35 mile an hour winds, and uh, this kind of gives you an idea where the pattern of snowfall is going to be through Saturday night. You notice out in eastern Montana, anywhere from 6 to 10 inches could be a little bit more, some higher elevation. Most of that, again, settling for the southeastern corner of the state. And yes, tomorrow night, 7 p.m., it's the holiday parade downtown Billings. Here's a quick sneak peek of the forecast. The snow will be falling. The wind will be blowing. 22 degrees with an 8 above wind chill. Bundle those kids up, and let's be very careful. It will be snowing tomorrow night. Janelle? All right, thanks so much, Rob. Well, President Trump made an unannounced visit to Afghanistan this Thanksgiving Day and joining the president, U.S. Senator John Barrasso of Wyoming. Now, the trip, the trip to pay tribute to troops overseas was Trump's first to the region. Tom Hansen reports. President Trump's surprise Thanksgiving visit to American troops in Afghanistan comes less than three months after U.S. talks with the Taliban collapsed. The Taliban wants to make a deal. We'll see if they want to make a deal. It's got to be a real deal, but we'll see. In his first visit to the war-torn nation, the president said he has restarted peace negotiations with the militant group. So we're talking to the Taliban. Yeah. President Trump also talked about the Taliban in a meeting with Afghanistan's president. We've been wanting to make a deal, and so have the Taliban, and we pulled back. The Afghan government has previously expressed doubts over the prospect of peace with the Taliban. American forces have been in Afghanistan since shortly after the September 11, 2001 attacks in what has become America's longest war. President Trump reiterated his goal of pulling some of the approximately 12,000 troops out of the country and hinted at how many might remain. You mentioned 8,600. Is that not the number? That's the number that people are talking about, yes. And is that the number you're talking about? Yeah, it is for now. Veiled in secrecy for security reasons, the president's visit lasted just a few hours. You say happy Thanksgiving. While there, he mingled with service members at Bagram Air Base and helped serve Thanksgiving turkey with mashed potatoes. Tom Hanson, CBS News. And the White House says this visit has been in the works for weeks. Well, back here in Montana, a lot of giving and sharing this Thanksgiving. Chefs at the Billings Food Bank, along with help from volunteers, whipped up 80 turkeys in preparation for today's Thanksgiving feast, open to anyone and everyone. Well, a few hundred people enjoyed a turkey dinner this afternoon. This year, the Billings Food Bank also picked up delivery service for the Montana Rescue Mission, which had to stop delivering food boxes last year. Now, Food Bank staff say they delivered around 120 dinner boxes to Billings families in need. Executive Chef David Maplethorpe says it's really the 35 volunteers that make this dinner a huge success. Well, you know, we think it's something that has to be done. You know, there's a lot of people that have that need, and we're here to provide that need for them. And, you know, with all of our volunteers, which are very gracious to come out on their day, their Thanksgiving day to help us, it's very much appreciated. And the Billings Food Bank is now moving on to Christmas meals. The facility located on 4th Avenue North is always accepting your donations of food or funds to help feed Billings. Well, turkey trotters brave the morning snow flurry to burn some calories before diving into Thanksgiving dinner. That's right, more than 2,500 people trotted through the 5K Run Turkey Run race on the streets of downtown Billings. As you can see, some dressed for the occasion. Waiting at the finish line for everyone of age was a commemorative pint glass and a token for beer to fill it. Run Turkey Run is in its ninth year and raises money for local food pantries. This year, the run benefited Meals on Wheels Family Service, the Billings Backpack Program, the MSUB Yellow Jacket Emergency Pantry, and the Rocky Mountain College Bear Cupboard. 
everybody really helps out during the holidays, but these organizations feed our friends and neighbors all year long. And so we just want to kind of give them a, a shot in the arm with the financial support in December. And so hopefully they'll keep their programs going all year long. This year we've got 2,500 runners, 2,572 to be exact. The community just continues to support us every year and it, we just can't thank them enough. And in the last eight years, Run Turkey Run has donated more than $250,000 to local charities. Well, also on this holiday, holiday, recognizing those who rarely take the holiday off. Well, that's because they're needed too much. First responders have nerves of steel, but even the bravest among us need a little emotional support now and then, especially after responding to catastrophic fires, devastating car crashes, or even death. Often by their side are chaplains who offer comfort and support. And as MTN's Jill Valley tells us, Missoula's police chaplains are now working to spread their wings even further. The one thing that makes everyone equal in life is we all die. And who's with us in those moments when death has touched our life? Missoula police chaplains David Lodwig and Aaron Kepke are the ones who will hold a parent's hand to tell them their child has died. They are there to help a troubled officer when they've seen horrible things out on a call. They do this as volunteers. And to be an agent of compassion, to be an agent of support when somebody goes through an inevitable, awful, awful moment in life, it's actually more rewarding than it sounds just to be able to be there and, and help people through those moments. Moments of crisis like this, um, it really matters how this is handled and it could be handled poorly. And this is a moment where you really deserve to have someone with you to, to hold this together with you. Um, until you can get your feet under you. As volunteers, David and Aaron use their own cars and often pay for their own supplies to serve the public, and they're happy to do it. But they were recently encouraged to form a nonprofit to help fund what they do. And with a board of directors behind them comes the brand new Missoula Chaplain Services. As a volunteer, it's been hard to juggle uh, our, our full-time professions as well as the commitments we want to make to the community. Donations go to provide us with ongoing training to enable us to be able to provide uh, to first responders, uh, put on events, things like that for their families, uh, provide resources to people in uh, traumatic moments. The new crisis support initiative launches early next year under the umbrella of Missoula Chaplain Services, providing care to the Missoula Police Department and other local first response agencies and the public. The new initiative is dedicated to helping provide greater on-site resources to anyone who finds themselves in moments of extreme trauma and loss. Right now, David and Aaron are the only two Missoula Police Chaplains, but they're going to need more help. Missoula's population is growing, crime is growing, and the pressure on law enforcement is greater than ever. Last year, the amount of first responder suicides was actually greater than line of duty deaths. And so the statistics show us now that every other day in America, a cop kills himself. And when an officer needs support, being a familiar face goes a long way, which is why investing face-to-face -face time at the police station, the firehouse, or the highway patrol ahead of time is important. The nonprofit's going to allow us hopefully to spend more time, um, more deliberate time, more scheduled time doing ride-alongs and such to develop that relational capital. Trauma will touch the lives of the people of our community and who's going to be there for them when it does. In Missoula, Jill Valley, MTN News. All right, thanks so much, Jill. In other news tonight, ski lovers can rejoice. Tomorrow is the official first day of the ski season and Red Lodge Mountain will have a total of six lifts open to ring in that winter celebration. And one of those lifts, the popular backside lift, Coal Creek. The Red Lodge Mountain Facebook page says all of that terrain will be ready except for headwaters. This is the earliest in recent memory that Red Lodge has been able to open up the Coal Creek lift. The other lifts running tomorrow include Grizzly Peak, Triple Chair, Willow Creek, Miami Beach, and Magic Carpet. And those lifts start turning at 9 a.m. tomorrow morning. Well, for those of you ready to greet the grizzly temperatures and loads of snow moving into the region tomorrow night, we have a place for you. The Q2 team will meet you in downtown Billings just before 7 o'clock on Friday for the annual holiday parade. This longtime tradition ushers in the holiday season on the Friday after Thanksgiving. And if you and your little ones are bundled up well, come on out to eat, shop, and take in a fun parade. This year's theme, Let It Snow, and I can tell you Q2 is taking on that theme seriously 
We will not be throwing candy due to important safety rules, but I can tell you there will be things flying from the Q2 float. So watch for us, and of course, Santa will bring up the end of the parade, wishing you all a happy holiday season. For the map of that holiday parade route in downtown Billings, head to KTVQ.com. Still to come on your Q2 10 o'clock news, some ways to help your loved ones with Alzheimer's better deal with holiday stress so they can find some Christmas cheer. Plus, balloons at the Macy's Day Thanksgiving Day Parade reach for the sky, but the wind had other plans. And in sports, the Montana State football team stole the headlines last weekend, but it's been a fantastic fall for all of the Bobcats. You're watching MTN News with Janelle Slade and Russ Riesinger. Storm Tracker Weather with Bob McGuire and Sports with Scott Breen. This is the 10 o'clock news on Q2, Montana's news leader.